Jesus. Amém. Ora por nós, os pecadores, pelos que não querem nós, a morte dos nossos pecados. Em nome do Padre, e que ele é Espírito Santo. Amém. Para te darmos em paz. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowd paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them to the God, who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. 
the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that will be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteousness for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you, and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. It is so great that we are able to gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries and to hear the Word of God, um, to rejoice in the wonderful saving love uh, that the Lord has shown to us in His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we listen to the Word of God here, in particular the Gospel, um, our Lord is uh, preparing the Apostles for uh, His uh, passion, death, and resurrection, but also his ascension, and then the sending of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And um, it, in, in this, um, uh, we need to remember that Thursday, this coming Thursday, is the Feast of the Ascension. Uh, we're planning to have, uh, please pay, uh, you know, check in on our website or, or get on the email list by sending in your email address so that we can keep you informed. But I think we're going to try to have a uh, 7 p.m. solemn mass on the Ascension um, uh, in which we you know, give proper celebration on that feast. It's, it is uh, very, very significant. And uh, our Lord's Ascension into Heaven. And then 10 days later, of course, is the, the Feast of Pentecost which falls on uh, Sunday. It'll be Sunday after next. But, but with the Pentecost, you know, uh, there, there is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as described uh, and, and that we will celebrate. We, we are, uh, I think the church is intentionally reflecting upon these things and these references to the Spirit so as to whet our appetite. Uh, and to enable us to seek to be disposed for being truly renewed in the Holy Spirit. And uh, when I talk about renewal in the Holy Spirit, you know, I'm not talking about um, tambourines and guitars and banjos and jumping around and um, handling snakes and dancing in the aisles and stuff like that. I'm talking about something very substantial in terms of the grace of God at work. We share in the life of God by virtue of the Holy Spirit. Our baptism 
uh, in our baptism, we become a temple of the Holy Spirit. In our confirmation, we receive the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is active and dynamic in our life. The Holy Spirit is the inspiration of the love of the Father and the Son, the third person of the Trinity. And, um, and He, the Spirit, um, imparts to us these gifts uh, that are so important. Uh, all of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but also to understand that he, he enables us to tend toward God. In the sense that, well, we can drift away from God, you know. And if we, if we fall into sin, uh, we, we are completely and utterly helpless with regard to even... Uh, you know, having a direction to return to the Lord, to redirect and so forth. There's a grace that the Lord gives us because um, we're so helpless in the state of sin that we are relying on the Lord for the grace to return to Him. And that is known as prevenient grace. It is what initiates a first movement in the heart, the mind, and the soul to want to return to God and to recognize the miserable state that we are in if we fall into any sort of serious sin. This is because this, this love of the Father and the Son and their spirit, the aspiration of this love um, is about um, assisting us in responding to the Father's plan and the Father's will of being in communion together. Together with God, which is the first priority. Uh, but our Lord makes it also clear that we cannot have communion with God if we do not have charity, love, communion with one another, and vice versa. They go hand in hand, loving God and loving neighbor. Um, and, but, but the Lord uh, is holding out to us, um, saying that I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, and you will live. Uh, in a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, and you will live. Those are very, very powerful words. And um, uh, because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And it, 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 he, he becomes our life. And that is what uh, empowers St. Peter to say uh, here in his first letter, the second reading of today's liturgy, sanctify the Lord, as, as, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that, will be, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. And so, um, this, uh, this being ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks a reason for your hope uh, that is so powerful and is so necessary in our times uh, because we're living in, in an age where there's been so much disinformation, such confusion, such turning of hearts to things of the world that are so misguided and uh, people are seeking to fill something within themselves but they don't know where to go, where to turn they don't know the sources. They don't know even who they can trust and who they cannot. It is by our Christian witness, our Christian witness that is guided by the Holy Spirit in our minds and our hearts. And also with the knowledge and the understanding, the courage, all of these gifts of the Holy Spirit that we receive in confirmation. The gift of the Spirit of, of persevering in the state of grace. Um, that by the example of our lives, uh, we are able to be a walking proclamation of the gospel. And, and present something that's attractive to people.
because people are looking for true peace and true happiness. And when we live in a way that, that doesn't walk in lockstep with uh, the spirit of this world and those who are subject to the spirit of this world, we certainly dare to be different and there will be sometimes suffering uh, uh, because of this, but it is indeed suffering for doing good and is suffering for a witness to the Lord and to his wondrous love. And, and other people, you know, uh, will recognize there's something salutary in the challenge of living this kind of way. So, you know, uh, in these days, I think it's important that we, uh, that we really allow the Lord to whet our appetite and, and that we foster this sort of reflective disposition within ourselves as we're approaching the Ascension and approaching Pentecost. Um, and uh, we'd be disposed for a, a really fruitful um, uh, being docile to the Lord and being disposed to uh, be renewed in these gifts. Um, and that our witness may be effective. And I want to say I'm so edified and so grateful to God because I... You know, I don't always know all the details about everything, but, but I certainly, certainly get very, very uh, uh, beautiful indications of the wonderful witness that so many of you are, are making uh, in the way that you love the Lord, in the way that you want to serve Him, in the way that you have uh, chosen uh, to take on sometimes crosses in your life, which you see as a part of your vocation, and it is. Okay, and, and at the same time, aspiring to sanctity, uh, braving uh, the criticism and the ridicule of the world, etc., uh, and yet maintaining a joyful disposition. And that's so, so beautiful and such a great blessing. So it is so important that we assist each other, that we persevere, because the Spirit of God is the Spirit of unity, of truth, Spirit who always helps us to pursue holiness. And with that comes peace and joy. No matter what other kinds of storms are raging around us or in our lives, whatever kind of drama is going on, we always have to come back to the truth of God's love for us and His plan that ultimately is going to get us through all of those storms and uh, wants us to draw others uh, and throw them that lifesaver, so to speak, uh, when they are in uh, drift in the sea and the waves are are threatening in them and they are in peril. You and I are entrusted with the lifesavers to help them. And so let us uh, be generous in that and let us console and strengthen one another in our desire to carry out that faithful witness. Uh, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us together ask for the gifts of his spirit for the church and the world. For our Pope and all of bishops, that they may rejoice to teach the commandments of God and lead all people in the way of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all the sick, and for all who care for them, that we and they may experience the healing mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders everywhere may work to end religious persecution and defend the freedoms of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the spirit of truth may enable all people to see that human life at every stage must be respected and protected and loved. And that no person has the right to choose to kill another innocent person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all we graduates, that they may use the knowledge and skills they have acquired to advance the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those in purgatory, especially our loved ones, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we ask today for the gift of obedience to your truth in the abiding presence of your Spirit. Grant all that we need. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offering, offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you O Lord but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for with the old order destroyed our universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. As they through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, his assisting Bishop George, and all those who, holding to the faith, to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, so they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of servant of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Last time those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, friends, I mentioned uh, in, in the homily that uh, Thursday was Ascension, and we're, uh, I think, going to try to have a solemn Mass in the evening, probably at about 7 p.m. Um, there's also uh, Rogation Days, and I want to give you a little explanation. Uh, the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before the Ascension are observed as days of solemn supplication and are called Rogation Days from the Latin word rogatio, meaning lit litany, because the litany of the saints is chanted on those days and the processions uh, which take place. The rogation originated in France in the year 469, the city of Vienne suffered from earthquakes, failure of crops, and other calamities. The pious bishop Mamertus, who saw in the events the judgment of God called upon his flock to appease heaven by penances, processions, and prayers during three days before Ascension Day. The example of Mamertus was followed by all the French bishops, and the custom finally became general. These uh, three rogation days serve also as a preparation for the Feast of the Ascension, which reminds us that we have the most powerful intercession or intercessor in our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, who is now enthroned at the right hand of the Father. So um, I think uh, at least on Tuesday, um, I'm going to try to also have the Litany of the Saints uh, prior to the, uh, the Mass, uh, the 1210 Mass. Um, Tuesday also, uh, for myself and my classmates, uh, Father Philip Wilhite, who's a pastor of Sacred Heart uh, Church in Conroe, and Bishop Cahill, who's a bishop of the Diocese of Victoria, we all went all the way through the seminary together. And uh, on the 19th of May, uh, which is Tuesday, is our 30th anniversary of ordination to the priesthood. And um, obviously, under the, the uh, coronavirus circumstance, we can't really do a lot in terms of uh, festivities, but we can celebrate Mass. And so uh, I invite you to, those of you who can, to come to the 1210 Mass on Tuesday, and we can worship God and thank Him together. And those who cannot physically come, perhaps can participate in the live stream. Um, uh, but but um, anyway, we want to give thanks to God for, for 30 years of uh, ministry and in service of the um, Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, and of course the Bishop of Victoria and his diocese. Another thing is that I received a letter this week um, um, uh, informing me that uh, Isaiah Silva has been accepted, uh, Isaiah, step out a little bit. Isaiah Silva has been accepted into the seminary to study for our Archdiocese, uh, and so, you see him wearing a collar. He jumped, he jumped at the, the first opportunity. Uh, but uh, we're very excited and thankful to Almighty God that he's been accepted in the seminary. And so uh, he has uh, several years of preparation to go through. But uh, let us support Isaiah with our prayers. And let's continue to pray for vocations. Work and pray for vocations. It's hugely important. And uh, the uh, lack of vocations uh, is really getting to where we're, we're being felt. It's being felt. And uh, we can't protect everybody from being inconvenienced. And I want you to bear that in mind because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times people go to parishes staffed by religious orders. They have religious living in community. And, and people think, oh, but well, there's plenty of priests. 
But in diocesan parishes, it's not quite that way, you know. And so um, we need to work and pray for vocations. So uh, uh, please uh, uh, pray and sacrifice uh, for vocations because we have to have priests to have the Mass, to have the Eucharist, and uh, so many other things. Yesterday, I celebrated Mass three times. I had the morning Mass at 8 o'clock, and then at 12.10, or 2, 2.30, I had a, a uh, Mass in which I brought a couple into the church who'd been through the RCIA. I received their profession of faith. I confirmed them. I witnessed their marriage vows, and uh, I administered First Holy Communion. Uh, I heard confessions that day. I offered the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And then uh, at the Vigil Mass last evening, as a matter of fact, he's back for Mass this morning. I saw you saw you come in, Michael. Um, Michael Buys. I baptized Michael last evening at the Vigil Mass, confirmed him, and administered uh, his First Holy Communion. I also administered the Sacrament of the Sick yesterday. Six out of the seven sacraments I administered in one day. They say that we, uh, priests, we hatch them, match them, and dispatch them. I, I didn't dispatch anybody yesterday, but um, I hope that I helped a lot of people to be prepared for the launching pad. At any rate, uh, thank you, friends. It's so great that we can come together, and uh, it's so great to see you and your families. And, um, so let us continue to persevere in, in uh, managing these restrictions. Also, you should know that uh, starting tomorrow, a 6.30 a.m. Mass will, will resume on condition that we have the people to do the social distancing, wearing the masks, and also um, sanitizing the church after liturgies. Tuesday evening, there will be Project Mercy. Uh, but again, it's on condition that we have the people committed to do these things, to keep all these protocols and do it well. Um, and so the more help we have, the more we can do. All right, so um, let us, um, did I give the final blessing? Okay, I'm gonna go back to the chair, give the final blessing, and we'll have the, the, the prayers after Mass. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Mass ascended. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protected against the wickedness of snares of the devil. And God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust in the hell Satan and all the evil spirits. Who proud not the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O glorious Prince, St. Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of Souls, Vanquisher of Rebel Spirits, Servant in the House of the Divine King, and our Admirable Conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil, who turn to you with confidence, and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Amen. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I'm ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish you no more than this, O Lord. In your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself. To surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence. For you are my Father. Vouchsafe to hear us, O God, our only salvation, and through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Mary, Mother of God, and ever Virgin, of thy blessed martyr Sebastian, and of all the saints, deliver thy people from the terrors of thy wrath, and restore their confidence by the outpouring of thy compassion. Be moved to pity, O Lord, at our earnest entreaties, and heal the illnesses of body and soul, so that experiencing thy forgiveness, we may ever rejoice in thy blessing. We beseech you, O Lord, grant us a hearing as we devoutly raise our petitions to thee and graciously turn away the epidemic of plague which afflicts us, so that mortal hearts may recognize that these scourges proceed from thy indignation and cease only when thou art moved to mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and evermore. Amen. Regina Cheni, Leitare, Alleluia, we are. Oh.